Hi yogis, I'm Nicole, welcome to my yoga time. Today's yin practice is focusing on your posture. So if you're sitting for long periods of time, whether you're in a car, at a desk, hunched over a screen, this sequence is designed to sequentially open up the parts of the body that are typically shortened or contracted while you're in that seated position. So I will have two blocks for this practice, so if you don't have any blocks, you can always improvise with a rolled up towel and a pillow as well. When you're ready, we'll begin coming down onto your back. And allow your left knee to fall out to the side and then wiggle your left foot a little further to the right so that it's in between the right buttock and heel. Now, if your left hip needs support, just place your prop underneath the knee, otherwise allow that knee to relax. Option one, if you can reach the foot, Take a hold of the left foot with the right hand. Option two, a little stronger if you take a hold of the right knee. So you might have both hands on the knee or just one hand on the knee, keeping the other on the foot. Feel free to close the eyes. Softening the forehead. Positioning the tip of the tongue where the teeth meet the roof of the mouth. and feel a very slight engagement in the back of the throat. Ujjayi breath, breath with purpose. Almost feels like you're creating a direct narrow channel for the breath to pass. Begin to observe the navel rising and falling with the ebb and flow of the breath. Taking a moment to pause before each exhalation. To be careful in your yin practice not to overstretch. We're here for a few minutes, so it's important that you don't go to your edge. And whenever the mind begins to wander, just guide it back to the breath. Use the breath moving the body as your point of focus. And if your feet are tired and in a, a little need of attention and some self-love, feel free to give that left foot a little bit of a rub with your right hand, applying pressure in the balls of the feet, in and around the toes. Taking one more breath. Releasing the pose as you exhale. Lower right foot down if it's raised. Release the left leg and we'll change sides straight away. Right leg out to the side. Wiggle the foot a little further to the left. If you can reach the foot holding on, if not, that's okay. Option to take a hold of the left knee as well. And if you are straining through the neck and the upper back, you can always place your block or a pillow underneath the head.
Feel free to give your right foot a little rub, a little massage. And taking one more breath. Releasing the pose as you exhale. So with your next pose, you might like to use your block or your prop. Just on the side, we're gonna roll onto your right side and place the left knee on your prop. You can prop up your head with your right hand. Allow the left leg to relax there. Awareness now to the right leg. So tuck the toes under and rotate the leg so the heel points up to the ceiling and the front of the thigh is facing down towards the mat as best you can. Take the leg back as far as you can without losing that rotation and then bend the knee and collect the foot. Now, if you can't reach the foot, you can always use a strap or a belt. Option one, keep the head propped up. Feel free to Lower the ear down to the bicep. And ever so slightly start to tuck the tailbone under. Feel free to close the eyes. And deepening your breath down the right side of the body. Take one more breath here. As you exhale, releasing the foot. And propping the head up once again. Not quite a yin pose next, just a brief stretch in between. Feel free to hold the knee, the calf, or maybe you can reach the big toe, pistol grip, and extend the leg up to the ceiling. Inhale, and as you exhale, slowly lower down, and we'll change sides. So rolling back onto your back, and then over to the left side, moving your prop. Right knee is resting on the prop. Awareness to the left leg, rotating the leg, taking the leg back as far as you can, and then bending the knee, collecting the foot. Feel free to keep the head lifted, otherwise resting the ear on the bicep.
and deepen your pose by deepening the breath. Remember to pause before you exhale. And if it feels okay for you, pause again before the inhalation. witness all four parts to the breath. The inhalation, the pause, the exhalation, and the pause. One more breath. Release the leg as you exhale. Prop the head up once again. Taking a hold of the right leg, wherever you can comfortably reach and extend the leg up. Inhale. And exhale, slowly lower down. From here, roll onto your stomach. So a few variations with the next pose, depending on how you're feeling in your shoulders and your upper back. So we're going to take the right arm out to the side, creating a right angle, so that the elbow is in line with the shoulder. Option one, make a pillow with your left hand and rest the forehead down. If it feels okay for your right shoulder and you want to go a little deeper, bend your left knee, roll a little bit more onto the right hip. For your final variation, rolling onto your right side. So you're on your right hip, right ear is to the mat instead of the forehead. Left hand can be in front or you can take the left hand to the low back. If you're taking the left hand to the low back, feel free to connect index finger and thumbs or chin mudra. And if you find that your hips need support here, you can always place your block or your rolled up towel in between the legs. Do quite a strong one on the shoulders and the rotator cuff. Be careful not to push through any pain. Choose the variation that suits your body.
take one more breath. And if your left hand's in the bind, bring the arm down to the mat. Pushing up to tabletop now. So we're going to thread the needle right arm underneath the left. Bring your right ear to the mat, or you could always use your pillow or your block underneath for support. Option to take chin mudra through the right hand. You might like to keep your left fingertips on the mat, palm lifted, or you can take the left hand to the low back, whichever you prefer. Try to keep those hips square. Notice if they're swinging off to the left. And pressing down through that left palm, inhale, coming all the way up. Come down onto the navel once again, taking our laying chest opener on the left side. So same options as before. Left arm out to the side. Right hand may be used as a pillow. Option to bend the right knee, roll a little more onto the left hip. We'll come all the way onto the left side. Left ear on the mat. Right hand can come behind the body. Inhale, and as you're exhaling, prepare to move, release the pose. Returning to your tabletop position, we'll 
thread the needle on the other side. Left arm underneath the right. Option to point right elbow to the ceiling or take the right hand to the low back. One more breath. And coming all the way up. So next posture you'll need your props, whether that be your blocks or your towels and pillow. So coming into an upper back bend, one block will be placed underneath the shoulder blades the other prop underneath the head. And you might find that you don't need one underneath the head if you want to go a little deeper. So when you're ready, again, block is underneath the shoulders. If it's not comfortable, it might be a touch too high or too low. Feel free to have one under the head, or if you need more support, you can always turn the prop under the head a little bit higher. Or again, if you want to go deeper, bring the head to the mat. Now if your lower back is catching your awareness here, keep those knees bent. Otherwise, feel free to straighten and relax the legs. Or if you feel inclined to bring the soles of the feet together in a butterfly, by all means do so. And take the arms out to the side, find a comfortable height. The higher you take the arms, the stronger you'll feel that in the shoulders. Feel free to connect index finger and thumbs once again, taking your mudra. Try to allow your lower back to soften. Bring your awareness to the heart center. Breathe in to this space. One more breath. If your legs are in butterfly, bring the knees together. If the legs are straight, bending. Turn the palms down, tucking in the chin. You might find you can roll to one side, otherwise come halfway up to seated. Remove your props and recline once again. Taking a moment with the feet as wide as the mat, knees falling into touch. Hands can rest on the navel. 
feeling the meeting points between the back side of the body and the mat. Acknowledging any newfound space. Feel free to stay as you are if you feel the urge to take the knees and the hands, hug the knees into the chest or rock side to side, by all means do so. When you're ready, lower those feet to the floor. Coming into a supported bridge pose next. So lifting your hips and placing your block, your towel or your pillow underneath the towel bone. So if you are using a block option to be on the flat side, you might like to turn it to the second height. Or if you've got two blocks, feel free to stack the blocks both on the flat side, coming up a little bit higher. Turn the palms to face the ceiling, tucking the shoulders under. Again, feel free to take chin mudra, connecting index finger and thumbs. And close the eyes down here, softening the forehead. Tip of the tongue is still placed where the teeth meet the roof of the mouth. Taking one more breath here. Turning the palms down, lifting the heels and the hips at the same time, remove your props and then lower down one vertebrae at a time, keeping those heels high. When you touch down, take the knees and the hands, arms are straight as you inhale, bend the elbows as you exhale. Slow movement, slow breath. Next inhalation, lower those feet all the way down to the floor. Move the hips just a touch to the left. Cross the left leg over the right and bring the knees down to the right. Feel free to place the block underneath your legs for support. Now, if this is too intense on your hips, uncross the legs, place your prop in between the thighs and make sure your knees are in line with your hips. Arms can be out to the side. Or if there's any discomfort in your shoulder, just bring that arm down next to the body. And either keeping your head in a neutral position, or if it feels okay for your neck, move the back of the head a touch to the right, turn the head to the left. Thank you. 
And breathing into the lower belly, the lower back. As we wring out any last bit of tension along the spine, you might have the urge to exhale through the mouth. Inhale, the head back to centre, knees back to centre. I'm crossing the legs and changing sides. Hips move a touch to the right, right leg crossing over the left. Knees coming down to the left, supporting the legs as best you can. When you come into the pose, notice if you're holding on anywhere. Where can you soften? The outer hips, the buttocks. Begin to deepen your twist by deepening your breath. A moment to pause before you exhale. Once again, the option to move the back of the head a touch to the left, turning the head to the right. Taking one more breath. And then inhaling those knees back to centre and crossing the legs. Coming into Shavasana now. So you might choose to use your rolled up towel, your pillow, or even your two blocks. Placing them underneath the knees. Allowing the palms to face the ceiling, tucking the shoulders under. Softening the forehead. Allowing the eyes to roll back. Just acknowledging any newfound space in the body. The calmness in the mind. And please take as long as you need to hear yogis. Give yourself permission to rest. I hope you enjoyed the practice and that the sequence helps your posture. Have a lovely day. Namaste.